Hi, I'm Diane Lavelle. I'm a nurse talking about multiple myeloma. Recently in our unit, over the last year, we've been seeing more patients come in for staging of their multiple myeloma or MGUS, which I'll talk about in a bit. And so therefore, this is a refresher for myself as well as for my unit. And multiple myeloma is a cancer of the plasma cells that are inside of the bone marrow. It is the second most common form of blood malignancy after lymphoma, which is the first. In fact, out of all cancers, about 1% of cancers are multiple myeloma. The five-year survival rate is approximately 35%, although the survival rate is improving with new advances. A benign form of myeloma is called monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. This is actually much more common. In fact, you'd be amazed to know that as you approach 70 years old, uh, about 5% of people 70 years old and older actually have developed MGUS. Uh, with MGUS, there's about a 1% chance annually of a patient developing full-blown multiple myeloma. With multiple myeloma, there's no known cause and no known cure. There are some risk factors, and here's some of them. Um, advancing age, sex, family history, genetics, radiation, and obesity. Regarding how it works, multiple myeloma is a cancer of the plasma cells that are in the bone marrow. Plasma cells are appropriately in the bone marrow, and they are normally doing their thing, making antibodies, diverse antibodies like they're supposed to. So this, the picture more to the left shows a normal bone marrow um, with multiple myeloma. Uh, sorry, with plasma cells creating antibodies that are in the shapes of those Ys. And then on the right, uh, we see uh, the plasma cells uh, overgrowing, and uh, it doesn't show up, but they would be producing these monoclonal uh, antibodies, the same duplicates of each other. And uh, the problem, as you can see in the picture on the right, is that these plasma cells are crowding out the normal cells that are in the bone marrow. Um, so this actually causes bone lesions as well as crab symptoms, which I'm going to talk about crab symptoms in a minute. Here's a picture of a well-behaving plasma cell doing what it's supposed to do. It's making antibodies, which are in the shapes of those Ys. And the antibodies are diverse. They're attacking two different kinds of bacteria, and that's what they're supposed to do. And as you can see, they're, they come from the B cell line. I like these slides because they really show what's going on in the bone marrow. The left slide is normal bone marrow with an occasional plasma cell doing its thing, making diverse antibodies like it's supposed to. But the slide on the right shows what happens with multiple myeloma. There are multiple, multiple plasma cells, and they're not behaving like they're supposed to, and they're crowding out other cells in the bone marrow. With all these extra plasma cells and monoclonal proteins in the body, what do you think is happening to the body? Well, just take a minute to look at this. Uh, this visually shows what's happening. And I want to point out the, the, uh, the real, real major sequela that can happen is the renal failure. So what do you think brings an undiagnosed patient into the doctor's office in the first place? Well, you might be surprised to learn that bone pain is the number one presenting complaint. And so they may even show up uh, at the orthopedic or the general or internist. And, uh, but then through routine lab work and other clues, multiple myeloma may be uncovered. Elevated serum calcium level would be seen on routine lab work because of the lesions effect uh, on the calcium in the bone. Elevated creatinine and reduced GFR can be seen because of the protein's effect on the kidney. Anemia can be seen um, because of what's going on in the marrow. Elevated protein uh, can also be seen because you've got more uh, clonal antibodies being made. If you'd like, you can think about this cute little crab when you think about the mnemonic for the criteria for multiple myeloma. C stands for elevated serum calcium, R for renal insufficiency or failure, A for anemia, and B for bone lesions. So always remember that crab when you're considering somebody that may have multiple myeloma. So once you recognize these crab symptoms or otherwise suspect multiple myeloma, there's further diagnostic that would be done usually with a hematologist. 
uh, ordering these further tests. Bone marrow biopsy are usually done in the iliac crest. Uh, flow cytometry where um, the plasma cells are counted and evaluated through cytometry. I'll show you a diagram of that. Protein electrophoresis to see the breakdown of what types of protein there are. Immunofixation to understand the breakdown of immunoglobulins. And serum beta-2 microglobulin level useful for staging multiple myeloma. X-rays are of limited value because the bone lesions are not able to be seen on x-ray until they've, they're larger. Flow cytometry is a powerful tool whereby cells are flowed one at a time past a laser light source and the way that the light somehow scatters from that um, observation of that determines the cell counts and the cell attributes. Uh, the sample that goes into the flow cytometry can either be bone marrow aspirate or it can be serum and Cytometry, cyto is for cell and metry is for measurement. Serum protein electrophoresis is pretty cool. It looks at the types of proteins that a person has. So in figure one, a person, a norm, normal pattern should be as, as seen. Albumin makes up about half of the proteins. And in figure two, in multiple myeloma, you see that there's a spike in another kind of a protein, and that is called the M spike in multiple myeloma. This is an example of a lab report on a patient that we had in our unit with all identifiable information removed for HIPAA. She had the uh, tests that we've been talking about. She had protein electrophoresis done to determine if she had an M spike. She had the beta-2 microglobulin checked to see if she's progressing in myeloma and she had immunofixation done to get a breakdown of her immunoglobulin and she had light chain assays done to rule out Ben Jones light chains and also on the next slide this is a pathology report after we sent the bone marrow aspirate over to cytometry for and it went through flow cytometry where they were able to count cells give attributes to cells and there was a not a multiple myeloma conclusion from this report. Staging for multiple myeloma starts all the way over to the left uh, on the blue line where we have MGUS, that benign form, where there is just a small amount of monoclonal cells and then uh, it progresses all the way, uh, it goes to smoldering myeloma where there's no symptoms up to the three stages of multiple myeloma with the third stage being the worst where the um, clonal cells are more than 10% of bone marrow and the zero beta to microglobulin level is over 5.5. So that is what staging is. Regarding initiation of treatment, that's usually decided on after evaluating the extent of the symptoms, the person's age, other risk factors. And if the patient only has the benign form of multiple myeloma, MGUS, then treatment is not usually started and the patient's usually just monitored. So if treatment is initiated, it's individualized to the patient. It usually consists of a combination of one or more of the following drugs and procedures. Prednisone, bortezomib, which is new, which I'll talk about in a second. Thalidomide, yes, the teratogenic drug is actually helpful here. Malfarin, and of course, bone marrow autogolous transport. Bortezomib is the newest type of drug for multiple myeloma. It's a proteasome inhibitor. It, inhibit it, it inhibits the regulatory functions on the multiple myeloma cells. Unfortunately, there are side effects like peripher peripheral neuropathy and thrombocytopenia are common. Bortezomib, the good thing is it works synergistically with older multiple myeloma drugs, so the patient can be on their older other drugs at the same time, and that works well. All right, in closing, just some, some good news to look at. The quality of life and survival rate continue to improve with advances, and there is large funding going into full multiple myeloma research, and there are drugs, be, drugs being trialed, and I'm hoping that we see something like bortezomib, something like that in the future. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Here are the references. Please hit pause now if you'd like to write down any of the references. 
Here's a post test if you would like to try it. Please hit pause and then when you resume, the answers will display.